honestly, probably one of the best steaks I've had. And I've had a lot of steak. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Girod Girls. My name is Gerardo. Today I'm gonna be doing a cook that's always impressive no matter what time of year it is or what occasion you're pulling this out for. We're gonna be doing a tomahawk steak. So you can see here, this guy is a beast. It's huge, it's got a handle, and it's absolutely delicious. It's essentially a bone-in ribeye, but it's just enormous. It's gonna look fantastic on your plate and it's gonna be great at your next occasion. Are you ready to get going? Let's go. All right, here we go. So let's get this ready. It's super easy to do. We're gonna do this about an hour or so before it hits the actual smoker so that we can get those flavors to kind of soak into it. And there's really not a whole lot to do. As you can see here, I've tied it and you can do this a couple of different ways. You can tie it all the way around the bone and then what that does is gonna keep this shape while it sits on the tray. Um, I've just tied it kind of around the meat. I'm not, I mean, it's not a huge deal if you don't do it all the way around the bone. It just gives you a little bit more stability. But aside from really tying it, there's not much you're gonna do here. You could clean this up a little bit and kind of remove some of these little fat bits on the, on the end. I'm not going to, I think it's gonna be fine regardless. Um, and not a whole lot to do to clean it up. When you buy this, whether you're buying it from your local store or your butcher, it should already kind of come like this already. One end of the bone kind of Frenched and kind of trimmed short and uh, the rest just like this. I mean, you just want to tie it up if you want. The next step here is I'm just going to apply a binder. As you know from all of my videos, you don't have to use a binder at all. It's absolutely up to you. I like to use them. Uh, depending on the cut of meat. So what I'm going to use is just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and I'm just going to give it a little kind of spritz just to kind of moisten the top. And then for a seasoning perspective, you can use uh, your salt and pepper, whatever your favorite steak seasoning is, you can just put that on there as well. I'm going to go with an SPG or a salt, pepper, garlic, um, pre-made rub from Suckle Busters. It's a really good rub, goes really well on beef. Uh, it's already made and I've already bought the shaker, so I might as well use it, right? So here we go. And as you can see, this particular cut is huge. It's quite thick, it's about an inch and three quarters, close to two inches already. So it, it can take a lot of seasoning, so don't be afraid to add quite a bit. And that's it. So I'm gonna let this actually rest on my board and let it come up to room temperature. It's been in the fridge for a little bit. So I'm gonna let it rest on my board for a good 20 minutes to half an hour. If you've got longer time, let it sit longer. Uh, I wanna make this for dinner, so I wanna make sure I kinda of get it on there. A roast this size is gonna take me quite a bit of time. So I would say I'm gonna budget for about, roughly about two hours to get it up to temperature. So just keep that in mind if you've got something this big. Uh, or this thick, then you want to make sure you give yourself enough time. This is going to go into the smoker for about two hours, but I'm going to let it sit at room temperature for the next uh, 20 minutes to half an hour uh, and just let it come up to temperature. We're going to be smoking with mesquite wood at 250 degrees. I'll see you when we're ready to put it into the smoker. All right, so it's been about half an hour or so. The smoker is set up to 250 degrees. I've got it set up here. I've got a probe put into the end here. This is a meter wireless probe. I've only got that just so that it can let me know I'm gonna be working inside. So I need to make sure that it lets me know once we're ready to take it off of here. You could use the probes that are built into the smoker here as well. I just won't be able to hear them inside my house. So I wanna make sure I have something that I can hear. Now, to get this going, you wanna make sure it gets to the center of the rack. Don't worry too much about the bone itself. The meat is what's important. So just make sure the meat itself is positioned right in the center of that rack so that it gets all that smoke and then all that heat evenly. It'll cook evenly that way um, and we won't run into any issues. I've got the probe set to 115 degrees internal. Once it gets there, I'm gonna take it off and let it rest a little bit and then I'm going to sear it. Halfway through this cook, I'm going to come over here and just kind of flip her over so that we get a nice even coloring throughout and not the smoke's not just kind of pounding on one side. We're going to flip it on the other side as well. All right, and I'll show you when it's time to, I'll show you when it's time to flip it and then I'll show you when it's time to take it out of here. All right, so we're about halfway through this cook. The internal temperature right now is just about hitting 180 degrees. So I'm just going to give this a little turn, get a little bit. You can see the color on this. Nice on this side, so we're just gonna flip it around. And again, try to keep it as center as you can in that. 
rack. Get to keep it all together and give her a close so we don't lose that heat. And again, once we hit 115 degrees, we'll be ready to go. All right, so my alarm's going off. It's, the internal temperature is now sitting at 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this right off. It's looking wonderful already. I mean, we could have let this go all the way down to 130, 135. I'm not gonna let it do that. I'm just gonna smoke it for now. And then I'm going to sear it. So I'm gonna let this rest for a good five to 10 minutes. And then I'll show you when we sear it. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes or so. Now I'm just gonna get this uh, seared off. This has been heating up for quite a bit. We've got about 600 degrees to 700 degrees in there uh, on that rack. And we're gonna sear for about two minutes per side. Just be very careful because this is going to, if you're using over live fire, this is going to spark quite a bit or flame up quite a bit. And there you have it. Now that's seared. We're gonna let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes for another 10 to 15 minutes. And then we're gonna cut into it. All right, well, here we go. Now it's been resting for about 15 to 20 minutes and we are set. You can see here, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sear on it. it smells fantastic. It actually smell a lot of the smoke in it. It smells awesome. I can't wait to try to taste it here. Oh. See here, tough to see under some of these lights, but pink all the way through wall to wall. We got a little bit of this here on the top. You see where it's a little bit darker than the rest, but other than that, it is pink wall to wall with a perfect crust on it, and that's exactly what you want. I can smell all of that mesquite smoke that we put in there. Oh, so good. Let's have a taste. Unbelievable steak. Got a lot of that smoke in there, which is great. It's not overpowering. It is just the right amount of smoke. Mesquite, so good with beef. Honestly, probably one of the best steaks I've had. And I've had a lot of steak. Just perfectly cooked. When you reverse sear it like we did there, where which means we smoked it at a low temperature for the majority of its cook, you really retain a lot of those juices and it becomes so tender. You probably don't need it in, in like a ribeye. It's already got quite a bit of fat in it. It is actually very, really good. But I'm telling you, it is absolutely worth it. It's worth the wait to doing something, you know, for an extended period of time. You can do regular steaks this way as well. And they're absolutely fantastic. Doesn't get any better than this, period. Well, that's all I've got for you today. If you like what you saw, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see some more, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any content. If you want to see more of me, head on over to youtube.com slash grills. Make sure you subscribe while you're there and so you don't miss out on any of my content. Until next time, I'll catch you on the next G-Rod Grills. Cheers.